Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to, um, to present to you Pepper today because this is kind of the culmination of this work that we do in research in human-robot interaction. This is a robot that from this past month sold again for the third time a thousand peppers in Japan in one minute um, as soon as it was launched. So we have thousands of these robots in users' homes today, which is what, you know, what, what our goal is, right? So um, just to introduce you to uh, the, the goals that we have for Pepper, which is we've been touted as an emotional robot. Let me just show you a quick um, video from the commercials in Japan. It's in Japanese, but I think you'll still understand uh, the point. Japan. Um, we want to be able to detect users' emotions and respond to them appropriately because um, lots of emotions come up in the home, maybe much more than would come up in a laboratory setting, uh, even in our tests here. So um, let me give you a quick uh, overview of what, uh, new module we what new module we have made for Naoki. So maybe many of you have used now before. And know that there are different modules for interaction and uh, perception on the robot. And in the latest Naoki 2.3 that has been released, uh, there's a new module called AL Mood. And for AL Mood, what it is, is it's a tr trying to use a multimodal fusion to understand better the, the human in front of it. Um, what do I mean when I say mood? You know, what is the difference between mood and emotion? So, um, mood is defined as an affect that is continuous. It's a background emotion. We can have more, uh, more extreme emotional reactions throughout the day, but it's this kind of overlying mood that continues throughout our life. And so what our goal is, is to do some mood tracking on the humans around Pepper so that it can react appropriately and even maybe do some learning. So here's an example. For example, in the top, uh, let's say that negative, is, negative one is a negative mood and uh, plus one is a positive mood. On some days, when it's sunny, for example, we might have a generally positive mood, right? It might fluctuate throughout the day, but it might remain generally positive. On other days, let's say the weather is not that great. We've had a couple rainy days here in Paris last week. It might stay, you know, start out kind of negative, but depending on what interactions we have throughout the day, uh, we might be able to have some things that will boost our mood to positive. And so what our goal is for Pepper is that it would be a catalyst to help boost the mood of the users. So for example, you might come home and the robot says, hey, in a happy voice. You look nice today. It gives you a compliment. And maybe there would be another small peak in the, in the mood. Okay. So this is our goal for AL Mood. 
Uh, now, we talk a lot about emotion recognition, and in the past, in my research in Japan for emotion recognition, of course, we used the typical anger, uh, no, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, disgust, like all of these, uh, this emotional spectrum, but in reality, it's very difficult <laughs> in the wild to detect all of these different emotions. So we've taken a very pragmatic, simple approach and said, okay, what do users really want to know? What do we really need to know? Well, positive or negative, okay. If we can already get that, that would be great. And that already is a big challenge, right? Uh, but to do that, we try to fuse a bunch of modalities that by themselves may not be very robust classifiers, uh, but together will give us a better um, estimation of the user's mood. So let me give you a quick example. You look nice. You look not nice. I love you. I love you. So in that last example, you saw that um, using multimodal fusion, we can even tell the difference between a really full-blown I love you with the smile and the voice and something that where it could be maybe sarcasm. We can still have to detect this positive affect, but it's not quite as positive as when we have all of the features combined. So just to give you, this is more of a technical idea, so if you end up being able to collaborate with us, um, this is some perhaps some of the modules that you can use. You can get the um, emotion of the user in terms of negative and positive estimated by this module. Uh, the excitement of the room based on how much sound there is and the excitement based on the movement in front of the robot. Um, and one thing that we've developed is a, an emotional reaction. So let's say Pepper does tell a joke. What he wants to know is, did you like it or not? Did it make you laugh or not? Because if he, if he liked it, then maybe I'll do a bit more of these kinds of jokes. So this is a, something we call get emotional reaction. And I think in the demos at the very end, when we have more time, I'll uh, demo for that for you. And we can also have um, uh, gaze, eye direction, head direction um, uh, calculations so that you can tell, so the robot can know how much attention you're giving it at any given time. Uh, why are we making these mood metrics? So part of the reason is so that developers can use it in their applications and later on at the very end we can try, like, you know, hands-on to try some of the applications developers have made in Japan. But what we have is something called apps analytics. This is so that a developer that makes an app, say, tells a whole bunch of different jokes that might more or less be good, uh, he can detect all of the feedback after these events, after these jokes, and 
for, for himself is to decide, okay, well, these ones got a positive reaction, these ones got a negative reaction. As a human developer, I can modify my application for the future, just like Google Analytics, right? Um, and the goal is that the robot in the future can do this by itself. Uh, I think this is nearing the end of my talk. I wanted to, I, this is the last slide, and I, I'm afraid I can't show you the, the one after this, because it has some um, images of, of, of some of our field tests, and I'm not sure if I am allowed to show them in this context right now. But uh, what we've been trying to do is collect databases. Of course, we have um, an atelier here, or we have sometimes open sessions where people can come and interact with our robots. We can get data from people that are young, old, uh, you know, of different uh, cultures. We have people visiting from out of town sometimes, where we can uh, collect um, emotional data in an interaction with the robot. So not acted. The robot says some jokes. People laugh or not. Uh, we try to put them behind barriers so they don't feel the social um, social emotions. For example, sometimes the robot. We, we had an uh, experiment where we had the robot make a mistake, like over and over and over again, to get someone kind of, you know annoyed with the robot, and they would at first make this <sighs> kind of face, but when they remembered that there are all the other people around, they would smile. <laughs> so smile, this kind of angry smile is some of the, the difficult uh, you know, um, situations that we have to deal with in the wild, um, uh, social, social emotions. So um, that's all. I, I don't know how much, I think I had a really short presentation, but I think we're running behind time anyway. But uh, afterwards, we'll show you more demos, and uh, you can feel free to interact with the robot.